Howdy, y'all. Remember when I said that uh, when you make your own tools, you get a lifetime warranty? Well, today I got to make good on that. I got to go into the dark part of the shop over here and get the tool that we're going to fix. There's part of it, right there. Let me see if I can find the rest. This is the spooky, scary part of the shop where we keep Brutus back here. Yes, I need to fix the tool that I use to pull the pre-combustion chambers, and you can see right there, the threads are very damaged, and it got kind of in there sideways as we were pulling out pre-combustion chambers, and it scraped off those threads, but I think I'm going to cut off this piece of all thread altogether and weld something new on there. You might be asking why I'm even bothering to fix this pre-combustion chamber puller. Well, it's not for us. It's for someone we met at the Longmont show where we took our 22. You might recall that this tool is kind of dual purpose and we made this adapter to remove the stuck bottom half of injector if it's stuck in the pre-combustion chamber. Now I've advised the same advice that we got before we pulled any pre-combustion chambers out of a D4400 engine, and that was make sure you have the parts in hand because you cannot get new pre-combustion chambers. You just can't. You can get the little copper washers and the O-rings still at CAT, but the rest of it you can't get. So this is one of those situations that once you go forward, you can't go back. I thought I had an extra thrust bearing around here because the one I used last time, the cage came apart, but I managed to save all the bearings, so if I put it together carefully, I can still use it. First things first, I need to cut this off of here. I'll take it over on the sander and the grinder and true the face of this up. And I've screwed another nut on the end to protect these threads. All right. That's close enough. What I used before was one inch all thread, but it was a softer grade five or less one inch all thread. I'm gonna be using three quarter inch all thread, but this is grade eight and it's fine thread. It's fixed. On the other one, I up here on the end, I made it so you could use a wrench to tighten it down. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna put a double nut on here if I need to so that I can keep the length that I have. This is pre-cut puller 2.0, and I'm not gonna wobble out the hole on the inside because I'm using a smaller all thread. That was a problem before, as those threads got into the side of it here. So I think we're gonna be okay now. I'll put a washer, a couple washers, the thrust bearing, which is going to have to be held together by pressure. Another washer and our nut. Down there is where it adapts to the threads on the pre-combustion chamber. And I was asked before why I didn't just use this size all the way up through there. And that's simple because there's not enough room for that size to get all the way through here between these studs and a nut. This also allows me to put a nut underneath of here so that I can press things back in with it. You're probably asking why we're not pushing out track pins so that we can get lefty up and going, and the answer to that is, well, we kind of are working on it. Right now we're gathering supplies to make the puller with, pusher, to make the thing that gets the pins out of the track chains. So the head we're gonna be working on today is from an early, early, early RD4, I think it's serial number 4G0300, 36, somewhere around there. So here's the pre-combustion chamber that came out of number four on our 4G. And I suspect that that's gonna be an issue on theirs too. I can sort of see inside there where it's kind of rust colored in a few places where it's starting to eat through. They suspect that number one has got issues because there's discoloration on the injector, but I've found that to be okay and consistent with healthy injectors on the other ones I've taken apart. So my theory is, if we do find something, it's gonna be a number four. Got the head here from the RD4, and it's an AMNRN. 
So that head is a May 20th, 1940. So it's a not the original head off the RD4, probably a 7J series. We're gonna start here on number four because these tend to be the culprits on the D4400s. Every now and then you get lucky. I see it coming. Is it coming out? Yeah. Looks like it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's coming out. Boy, mine never pulled that easy. I had to fight them the whole way. I had a big cheater pipe on the ranch. Yeah, I, That's what broke my tool. I have good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this means two things. This means that you're not going to have a fight. and You can just put new seals in it. Or it came out in two pieces. One, two pieces, yeah. One of the two, yeah. We won't know that yet. Nope. So then you push it in just using these. That's what I do, but you could also just make a plate and yeah. push it in with nuts on each side. Yeah. Yeah, this is actually going pretty... A lot easier than I thought it would. I think you're going to be okay. My guess is that when they put this newer head on there, they probably put new... Pre-combustion chambers yeah. in. The well, McCoy Caterpillar did that in Durango. In Durango? Mm hmm That was rebuilt, redone. You know what? You look pretty good. Maybe they did it when they overhauled the thing, but it, they shouldn't have had that many hours on it. No, it looks pretty good. It's rust pitted to be sure, but it really doesn't look terrible. You don't have the it's not all built up and corroded and plugged up in the holes here that cool uh -huh, it. To cool it. Ours was terrible. So there's a copper ring right here. Uh-huh, I see that. That yeah. you'll, you'll have to get out. And I've got you the part number for that. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that there should be an arrow right here it is. See it? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, uh-huh. And then that'll line up with the arrow on your pre-combustion chamber. the center line of these bolts is yep. good, too. Right? As long as you get the angle right where they go in. Yeah. Right. So we got some interesting developments. You can see on this one, there's some knurling on the bottom. And the gentlemen here suspect that that is because they did that to keep it from wobbling around in there. And I have the one from 1939 from RD4, 38 actually, and it doesn't have that. So something that they updated. We're gonna pull number one out, see what it looks like. Number four, I think they're gonna to manage to save that one. We'll see what number one looks like. And it looks like the tractor that this was in, was it, it was running great, was running fine. It was making a little steam. So this is probably to see if they're leaking around those pre-combustion chambers. And number four was relatively loose, but not terrible. I wish ours, ours would have come out this easy. That one doesn't look too bad. So we notice that this one's not knurled on the bottom like number four was, which leads me to believe that they've replaced number four, yeah. which is usually the problem. This one doesn't look terrible. It's not as pitted as number four. Oh, we'll put it in order here. Did you... Did you make the threads to fit in this? Uh, no, I actually I bought a piece of all thread for the tool that that no, but uh, the, the part that screws in there. Yeah, no, it's all thread. I got from McMaster Car. Oh yeah. Uh, my neighbors like they made the one here for the injector puller. Forty was that like forty millimeter? Um, I think it was pitch, inch and five eighths, inch sixteen. And five eighths, twelve pitch. Or twelve, 16. yeah. Twelve pitch, sixteen. But it was like a metric twelve. Right. Uh huh. Metric twelve. Yeah. And the injector one's metric, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and pull out these other two in the middle. They're coming out fairly easy, and might as well do it while we're doing it. Look yeah, at that. that's coming right out. Oh, there's a little bit of... Uh, there it is, isn't it? No, maybe not. There's some corrosion in there. That's just in the water system. I don't know it's on that either. No. A little bit of dirt and debris in there, but it's not terrible. Nothing like ours was. We were just looking that you can actually move this pre-cup by hand a little bit if you could see that 
bopping up and down. Yeah. So these mm -hmm. are pulling real easy. Look, I could turn the nut by hand and it's starting to pull it. Look at this. Getting a little snug. It's not going to take hardly anything. Look at that. Well, that's good because nothing got broken. Yes, that's very good. These are all salvageable. Oh, that's the nicest one of the bunch. That might be the newest it is. one. Yeah. That could be the one that might be leaking. Could be. That one's very clean. Not, Not pitted, nothing. Doesn't even look terrible inside there. So we're pretty sure number four has been replaced. Different O-ring has the knurled pre-combustion chamber. So somebody's been in this head before, and this is a newer head than the tractor. And do you, what is the serial number? Two thirty-eight. It's a four G zero two three eight. So very very early RD four. It doesn't even have the four G on it. Oh, it doesn't have the four G. Wow. Just no, no, just 238. Just That's 238. It. That's cool. Machine and tractor. And engine, I should say. So the owner of this tractor is actually going to put a turbocharger on it. And he saw a early McCoy Caterpillar one. It wasn't called a turbocharger. It was called an air activator. And it was used up by Vale up in the mountains here. On the ski area. On the ski areas so that they would have a little bit more air where the oxygen's thinner so it would run a lot better because of our altitude here. Well, that was quite a contrast from how it usually goes when we try to pull out pre-combustion chambers. I'm glad everything went well, and it's always fun to look at the different dates and look at the different things inside of there. You can It really tells a story. It's also interesting to see one that came off of a running machine, and this machine's gonna end up with a turbocharge on it. So he's gonna get real creative with the intake manifold. He showed me some of the things he's gonna do. I really think it's cool. It's gonna be neat when it, when it gets back together, especially turbocharging such an old RD4. That's really cool. I'm kind of excited to see it. This gentleman has restored some of the tractors that are sitting in the Earth Moving Legacy Museum. I need to get out there and see that sometime. Well, I thought this would be an interesting video and show some contrast in the differences between our head and our experiences and ones that are running. I do want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. I'm sitting by the window in the shop. I'm actually taking inventory of all the gaskets I have. So when I would buy parts, if they were not super expensive parts, like it was a gasket that was $3. I'd usually buy two, maybe three. It was just a few bucks, because I know I'm gonna be needing them in the future, and I'd like to have some spares if I need them. What I've done is, this is a box I'm gonna put the paper gaskets in, and I've wrote the part numbers down of what I have, and I'm just putting two lines next to it. If I have two, if I have three, if I have one, you can see in this one I put plus two, and HM for homemade, because we have some that Dead made homemade ones for. The reason I'm doing this is because as we got to the end of the project, it got hard to find parts, and I would get stuff from Cat. I'd have an extra one, or we didn't use one. I'd just throw it up on the shelf, and then I forget that I even have it. So this way, I can at least come over to the box and look and say, yeah, I have this 2A whatever part. Right now I'm sitting over on the, uh, right over, right over. Right now, I'm sitting by the window in the shop, and what I'm doing is actually taking an... This chair is super squeaky.